Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and in this video, we're gonna go over all the free things that are coming to you with the update 1.7 that is coming next to the North America Animal Pack. If you want to check out everything that is in the North America Pack and all the animals, you can see a little glimpse here of the moose. But if you want to see a full video of that, I would highly recommend you to watch that video on my channel. I will also link that one in the description down below and with that little eye icon in the corner of this video. So without further talking, let's go over all the things that are coming to you with the free update 1.7. Now the first thing, very small but super useful that has been added to Planet Zoo is the scenery placement random mutation toggle. So if you click for example uh, uh, this, this one, let's go for this straight one so you can tell really easily. So if you go down right over here, you have random rotation. So if you click that one, this will rotate the object random in between other placements. So if we now click this one, you can see that it will rotate itself. Now, obviously with this item specifically, you would not really do that, but with any other item, item it can be very, very useful. Now you do have to uh, re-click this one again if you do it for the rocks. I noticed the first time I clicked this, it was not turned on. So no, you're not crazy if you're like, oh, but I did click that. No, it is in between rocks and plants and trees. You have to check it again, but very, very useful to make sure that your everything you place down is not exactly aligned the same way. Sometimes you can tell if you see a zoo and someone never rotates their trees, you can just see that all over the zoo at some point. And using this little toggle is definitely going to help you to make it all look more natural and mostly realistic in a way. So something else that has been added are the new height mapping tools. I did make a separate video about that to go into that in more depth. So I will not go talk too much about that, but I will link that video as well in the description down below. And you can also find it on the channel, of course. But if you go to a new sandbox zoo, you can now uh, click the biome and the continent, and then you have this terrain type. And uh, yeah, as I said, I will go over that more in depth in a different video on the channel because else this video would have become way too long. But what's also very cool is that you can now also select a scenario zoo for your sandbox zoo. So I, I did not uh, unlock these all, unfortunately, uh, but you can just click all the scenario zoos and you can also check here terrain only. So you can also use all these maps with only the terrain for your sandbox zoo. So you will not see anything built upon it and I think that's definitely really great for people that want to use more a, a different type of landscape instead of the flat one but are also maybe not so good at creating their own height mapping tool so this is definitely a great way of how you can use a terrain only map from a specific scenario zoo and the same goes by the way for all the maps that are created for the time scenarios you will also be able to open these terrain only or just the time scenarios itself in sandbox mode here. Now it's always hard to tell what is in the free update regarding new pieces. I can tell you that these new birch branches, I think they're called, yes they are, uh, are also added in the free update so you can now use these to build your own dams, to decorate your habitat and those kind of things. A very nice addition. Not that much new stuff. There is some new stuff with the uh, barriers and curbs. I will talk about that in just a minute. Uh, but other than that, there is not new stuff being added in this pack. We spoke about the trailer, uh, the announcement trailer and some uh, dry stone pieces and the chimneys and stuff. Those are removed from this whole time scenario. So I think they're still working on some new items and stuff. And it might be for the next update or <laughs> well, we have to wait and see, but probably in December. But these are some definitely really nice items uh, to get in the game as well. I really love it that there are some 
very, very small pieces in there. Something else new coming to you with a free update are the Animal Talk seating area. Something that made me very excited to be honest. Now they come with these two railings so you can obviously optional choose to have a railing or not onto them. You can add more seating areas next to each other and they're pretty easy to connect so you uh, just click the animal talking point and use this button link seating you select the seating area and uh it's actually like this and then you select the seating areas how many you want to link or unlink and then you can also use this option use seating room only or uh leave it unchecked and then it means that guests will stand next to it and use the seating area uh, so definitely a really nice addition. I made a separate video for people that are new to Planet Zoo and have no idea how to work that all out with an animal talking point, like the basics, how to make that work, including the seating area. So that one is also posted on the channel if you're interested. But yeah, seating areas, a very awesome addition coming to you with the 1.7 free update as well. Now this is probably next to the diving cats, my favorite thing of the free update curbs and barriers these are curbs and these are called barriers and they also added uh this fence right over here and two really cute signs to uh i don't know put whatever you want them uh, of course i don't think these do anything else no i don't really think so so now obviously I want to show you guys how these barriers and curbs work. So how to use these curbs and barriers. So as you can see, it's causing a lot of bottlenecks. So these examples, I would not recommend doing uh, very close to each other like we're doing right over here. But uh, yeah, we have this red fence, which basically works the same as the barriers. So if you want something really obvious on your path, this is the way to go for a uh, they really make sure that the gas will walk around this fence and not through it. Uh, for the creative way, if you have some beautiful building with some pillars on your path, you can put them underneath here. I, I put them both. I'm not really sure if that's really needed. Uh, but you can put them underneath the path so that you won't see them. But for this example, you do see them. Uh, but yeah, they make sure that your guests will walk around your pillar instead of walking through it. Uh, so if we go further right over here, you see the same example right over here with barriers. You can again just put them down underneath the ground as well, right underneath your path to make sure that you won't see them, but you can control your guest flow if needed. And as you can see right over here, there is one underneath the ground or underneath the path. And that one is making sure that the guests will walk around it as well. And we also have some curbs here. Now the difference between curbs and the barriers is that the curb somehow or sometimes when it's too busy guests will walk over it so the barriers are more strict so like you are not allowed to walk here curbs are a little bit more careful being like yeah well walk around it if you can if you can't then just walk over it and this is exactly how they work another example for creative people is when you have this archway underneath this archway you can see right over here that I added some barriers. So if you have some kind of doorway and you really want your guests to walk through the doorway or through the archway, then you can have these uh, barriers on the sides. You could even potentially say, I want to have some, uh, some curbs right over here at the edge just to make sure or dump some barriers, maybe even better. Uh, just to make sure that they really do not walk through the wall on the on the sides where you can use these curbs and barriers perfectly for you remember that you sometimes have this raised path and your guests are basically standing here behind your fence looking into habitat you ever had that situation well with these curbs you can now just put like a curb right on the edge and just really force them to not be standing over this barrier so that is definitely a really great way to make sure that your guests will not walk over this edge if that happens sometimes like it doesn't happen all the time right over here it's too busy of course but sometimes you have this habitat 
and you have gas standing over that edge and it's just super annoying, this is your way of fixing that little tiny annoyment and make sure your guests will not be floating in the air. Now this last example does not entirely work, unfortunately. Um, the idea is that your staff buildings, for example, are over here. You can have a normal natural path uh, with the curbs. You make sure that your staff will still be able to go here because they have this destination, but your guests would not go there. But I do think that the habitat right over here is too powerful that the guests would still really feel like walking here even though we have these curbs added. So I'm not entirely sure if that is a bug or that maybe the viewing of the habitat is too powerful. I intentionally put this here just to see how that would go, like would the curbs be more powerful than the habitat, but it looks like it's not. But you can still like for different areas which, which is not so close to a habitat, Make sure that you have just a natural path so you don't have to use the staff path for this and then add some curbs and that should potentially work in most of the of the situations. But I, I really do think that this is too powerful. Maybe Frontier can change that still, but yeah, that might be a reason why I guess would still be using this path anyways. Now the Zoopedia has had some really great changes. So there is this management tab right over here and I'm not entirely sure. I think that does not work with a sandbox zoo. So that might only work in the career mode. Same goes for the research tab. I think in sandbox mode, it's not really needed unless you turn it on. Uh, but some other things are really great. So you can tell already right over here that you can select for a habitat animal or for an exhibit animal. Uh, you can also click the continent, so you can now just click North America and then see all the animals that are coming from North America or from any other uh, continent, obviously. And the same goes for their conservation status. So some really neat functions to uh, search in the Zoopedia to the animals that you want. You can also filter them on the biome, so that is a really great feature as well. What is also really neat is that you can go to their natural habitat right now and just click here how many animals you are planning to add in your habitat and then you can already see how much land or how much water or climbing frames they exactly need in their habitat. A really great function that I can tell a lot of people will probably be using already. Oh, right now you can see that manage or research buttons are now open. So, right, okay, so you go from the Zoopedia map to your managing tab and it right away selects the species that you have in your zoo. That is actually really neat. So yeah, definitely some really great changes for the Zoopedia. I think many people will love to use Zoopedia more right now for a lot of different ways and for planning out your zoo or areas in your zoo. I think these are absolutely fantastic. What also has been changed is that you right now can select an animal in your animal management app and already quick trade it out of your zoo. So you don't have to go to your training center first or put the animal in your training center first and from there quick trade it. It basically works the same as release to the wild. And yeah, you can just more easily and faster already sell animals from your zoo. So really great change as well. And last but not least, with the update 1.7, we are now getting diving cats. The Jaguar, Bengal Tiger and the Siberian Tiger will now be able to dive and they will be able to use the uh, underwater animal feeder, which is absolutely fantastic. Right now when I'm talking, you are looking at some footage I made earlier in my river safari adventure. So the safari boat ride in one of the habitats just to check them out and to see how that would all be looking. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So yeah, this is definitely going to give us extra reasons to create some underwater viewing galleries for the Jaguar, the Bengal Tiger and the Siberian Tiger. I think they did a great job in these diving animations of these animals. 
And what is really fantastic is that they now change the minimum depth requirement ranging from two to four meters. So you don't really have to make sure that your habitats are six meters in depth. So that is definitely a really great improvement, even though in the footage that I used, that was still made with like the six meters, but it's definitely really cool to see how they are using this water section to dive around and, and all these changes from all the animals that do deep swimming are changed right now if i'm correct to the two to four meter depth instead of the six meters so that is also definitely a really great addition to this free update so yeah i'm just super happy with all these free updates 1.7 do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of all these free updates coming to you next to the North America pack. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already and if you want to see more Planet Zoo content I definitely have you covered on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching I really do hope you guys enjoyed and yeah I just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys!